Hello. So this is the solve walkthrough for Philip Newman's gas called xerophilus, which is a word that I just looked up, and it apparently means uh, of a plant or animal adapted to a very dry climate or habitat or to conditions where moisture is scarce. But I'm guessing that the reason it's the title of this puzzle is because it's a word that Philip likes that starts with X, and we are solving a Sudoku X today was the kind of original name of this variant, is my understanding. It's also called diagonal Sudoku. The way it works is normal Sudoku rules apply, so we're placing the digits 1 through 9 in each row, each column, and each outlined 3 by 3 region. And then on top of that, we have to place the digits 1 through 9 once each along each of the marked main diagonals in the puzzle. So let's get started. So the first thing I'm going to look for, because there are givens on the diagonals, is whether there are any digits that are restricted into certain positions by those givens. And what I see here is that this 4 and 6, they have to go along the negative diagonal somewhere. They can't go along any of these cells. And because of the 1, 3, 7, and 9, they obviously can't go into these cells. So I have to place 4 and 6 here. I don't have anything to tell me what order they go in, but now I only have three more digits to place along the diagonal. Those are going to be 2, 5, and 8, and I do know what order those go in based on the givens I have already. So now I'm going to consider the other diagonal. So I now have 4, 5, and 6, and I also have 2 and 8, and Philip has been very helpful in giving us specifically the even digits here because that makes it relatively straightforward to figure out which digits we still have to place. We still need all of the odd digits except 5, which is to say 1, 3, 7, and 9. So let's consider where we can and can't put those. So in this corner, we have a 1, 7, and 9 looking at it already. So that's going to be a 3. And in this corner, we have a 1, a 3, and a 9 looking at it already. So that's going to be our 7. And so now we still need to place our 1 and 9. And I don't see any givens that would tell me which way around those go yet. So I'm also going to leave those as a pair. So I have the diagonals complete, except for these two pairs, so I'm going to have to do some classic Sudoku to disambiguate those. So let's go ahead and do that. So as far as classic Sudoku, what jumps out at me is that I have these repeated 2s up here, and I have these repeated 8s down here, and that's going to end up being useful because the 2s see these cells, and there's also a 2 in column 3. So I can place a 2, and symmetrically, the 8s in rows 7 and 8 see these cells, and there's also an 8 in column 7, so I can place an 8 here. Does that give me anything more? So I have 8 and 8 here now, so 8 goes in one of these cells. And I have 2 and 2 here now, so 2 goes in one of these cells. But I can't quite place that yet, so we need to find something else. I see that I have two 7s here, but I don't see anything that that hands me right away. I have two fours here, that does give me something. So the fours here see almost the entirety of box eight, placing a four here. And the sixes here see almost the entirety of box two, placing a six here. And if you remember this four and six pair that I placed earlier, that's now resolved. So can I use that for anything at this point? So now I know that four has to go into one of these cells in box seven because those are the only cells that aren't already seen by a 4, so that turns that into a 2-4 pair, and what's more, because I have this 4 here, I can now determine which way around that goes. And let's check for symmetry. This is a very symmetrical puzzle. So 8, or sorry, 6 actually. 6 has to go into one of these cells. It can't go into this one due to this 6, so I'm going to have a 6 and an 8 there. Now I have two sixes here, which give me a hidden 6 in box 1, and I have two fours here, which give me a hidden 4 in box 9. I have a 1 and 3 in column 9. That tells me 1 and 3 can't go into these cells, so these two cells have to contain 1 and 3. And then my last two digits that I need, one of them is a 2, which will have to go here, and the other one is a 5. Over here, same thing. 7 and 9 in this column tell me 7 and 9 can't go in these cells, so these cells are going to contain 7 and 9. And now I still need to place an 8, which can only go here because of the 8 in row 2, and a 5. So column 1 and column 9 are looking basically full at this point. So let's see if we can finish those off. I need a 3 and a 6 over here, and sure enough, I can finish those. And I need a 4 and a 7 over here, and I can finish those too. Now, these, this kind of middle region of the puzzle is beginning to look a little bit fuller, so let's revisit it. These two 8s see almost this entire box, and then this 8, actually this 8 on its own, would have told us where 8 was in this box at this point. 
now that I know the eight can't go there. This is a useful shape to look out for, this kind of L shape with a given digit underneath it, because that will rule that given digit out of all but one remaining cell. Same thing here, that gives me a two. And now it's maybe worth considering what digits I still need, because now they're going to be kind of in this vertically stacked column. But what I notice actually, to save me a little time, is that I do know one of them has to be a three right away, which resolves this. And here, similarly, one of them has to be a seven right away. It's worth kind of looking at your pencil marks when you see something like that to avoid wasting time writing out all of the digits. But I'm actually gonna go ahead and write out what they have to be regardless, just to see if there's anything else there. So these have to be one, five, and seven. And that's not a one, that's not a five, and that's not a seven. And I can get rid of my corner marks just to clean up a little bit. These have to be three, five, and nine. And this is not a three, and this is not a five, this is not a nine. And now these digits can only be one or three. These can be one, three, seven, or nine, and I get rid of one possible digit from each of those positions, and then this is either seven or nine. So the next thing I notice is that I now have a one and nine that look at that one, nine pair, so we're going to come full circle and we're going to finally finish the diagonals, which means we are now just onto the classic portion of the solve. We need to place a one and a five here. There's a five in, column, in row eight. We need to place a five and a nine here, and there's a five in row two. Now we need a four and a seven here. They're going to go this way around thanks to the four in row three. And now we're going to place a five and let's see if we can make the same deductions at the bottom of the grid. So we need a three and a five here. Here we need a six. What digits do we still need in these two positions? We need seven and nine. We can resolve those. And in a moment that's going to finish up box five if I'm not mistaken. So now I need to place a one and a two. So let's finish box five. This is now a three because it's the only digit in its column. And there's a nine at, or a seven at the bottom of column five, so let's make that a nine. Now three, nine, and five right here. And our last four digits are going to be a three and an eight in column five. And over here we have a nine and a one. And that's how you solve Xerophilus by Philip Newman. Enjoy.